А, да, не мога да се стегна. Я, но окей, да бъдам и у нея с недлика. Тъй... А я сгалиме как предъявите на Трумпа пристатимо. Тък тъй виена, как клаусимо. Ар... Юм тинка, егу мес, юм как пристатимесме и сме скалбесме с англишкой, ар юм гереу бут, как мес скалбесме как бе с литувишкой. Nes man tai kaip jis vaizduoja, kad kaip, 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 ko repetitoriam tai nėra skirtumo, tai mes su, kaip, kaip jūsų klausimą abiturientų. Man asmeniškai nėra kažkokio labai didelio skirtumo. Aha, nėra. Jo, tai, tai mes faktiškai tada, kaip ir, kaip ir galėtume angliškai kalbėti, jeigu Na, na, jeigu mano kolegos kaip, kaip sutiks ir jiems patogiau angliškai. Galime ir angliškai. Jo, manau, gal, gal geriau bus kaip, kaip angliškai, nes ta bus, bus irgi kaip tam tikrą praktiką klausyjusi da mūsų, kai mes kalbam angliškai. Yeah, so anyway, um, uh, speaking about uh, our like mini presentations, so my name is Carlos, I am a first year VU student, I study English biology, um, I, uh, I not only, well, I'm trying right now to, to teach English and also in the future, but I also teach uh, debate at school, so I do have some experience. Um, in teaching, but it's my first uh, time actually um, trying to tutor 12th graders. So hopefully we'll, we'll all learn something new by the end of this, you know, nice project and experience. So um, I am Rugile. I am not far from Shulia, I'm from Kelme. And um, I also study in Vilnius University English Philology. Um, yes, and I'm I'm also uh, trying to teach um, um, uh, middle school uh, students English. Um, and yes, that's all about me. And then me, uh, I'm also in the same course as them. Uh, I'm also, my name is Martinez as well. Uh, uh, I'm actually from Chile. And I moved there just to study it. And well, this is not my first uh, tutoring experience, so uh, I can say I'm quite confident doing this. And I think we can just begin now. Enough about ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, just a few short um, notices about our presentation. So I know you guys have been basically preparing for the um, English writing and speaking exam for the entire year, uh, but since we don't really know you guys and we don't exactly know well what sort of um, you know level you're all personally on, since I, I presume that you're all from different schools. Um, well, well, maybe you're from the same school. I don't know. So uh, the the presentation and material that we have here. So we're going to be starting at a very basic level, just so that we um, rehearse the main and, and revise the main elements of formal and semi-formal letter writing. Yeah, so I hope it's it's okay with you guys if you find if we speak about some things that you may know, um, but there might be things that that other people from this group don't actually know. So that's why we're starting at this 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 very fundamental level. Yeah, but but I think that being said, we can we can sort of begin. So 
the way that we wanted to do this consultation is we're going to be um, speaking about the language of formal and semi-formal letters, what you should keep in mind um, when you write, what sort of phrases you should use, what sort of um, things you should avoid when you're writing a formal or semi-formal letter. Then we're going to talk about structuring paragraphs and what sort of goes into um, each paragraph, although we will later on sort of uh, <laughs> uh, uh, mention that this uh, depends highly on, the, on what the task asks of you. And then we're going to look at some examples of, of the types of semi-formal letters that you could uh, that you can expect from the exam. Yeah, so I think uh, I, I think I can take the slide. To, so I'll comment um, briefly about the language of formal and semi-formal letters. Um, so as as the name implies. Um, also, sorry for for stopping right here. But if you guys have any questions, that you can just raise your hand, or you can turn on your microphones and you can just ask in the middle of of, of the presentation if you wish, just to make this like you know entire experience more interactive. Um, this isn't a lecture was meant to have, you know, sort of open-ended discussion. Yeah, so as I was saying, as the name implies, formal and semi-formal letters um, should be written using formal language. But on its own, this doesn't, you know, tell you much, because what is formal language? Well, defining formal language is quite difficult because it's made up of a lot of different characteristics. Um, but we can definitely share some of them um, that you are um, expected to abide by when you're writing for the exam. So one of, the, one of these requirements for formal language um, is to not use any kind of contractions. So for the formal letter, you cannot use any kind of, of, of contractions. Of course, if you accidentally out of habit leave a contraction or two, I don't think that the evaluators will take off like many points for language, but if your entire letter is littered with, you know, contractions, then you will inevitably uh, lose out on points. Um, I, I believe this is true for the semi-formal letter as well. Um, well, my, my general rule is that each evaluator understands semi-formal in their own way, um, but just to play it on the safe side, I wouldn't use any contractions for the semi-formal letter either, because you can get punished for using contractions um, by some evaluators in the semi-formal letter, but you will never be punished for not using them. So my general you know, rule of advice is to try to not use them. Um, now, the next point is that the tone of your language should be impersonal. What this means is that you should try not to use um, too many personal pronouns in the letter, you know, I um, or we. Of course, if you have to um, comment on your own competences and skills and, uh, and, and what you're doing, then of course you need to use the personal um, pronoun. But um, if you need to describe, for instance, what another person um, is doing, then you can, instead of using personal pronouns, you can um, use passive voice structures um, that will be discussed with um, some of our colleagues in, in the later consultations. Or you can use impersonal pronouns such as one. I'm sure you guys have, have heard of um, how, how to use this. Um, but another important point is that you should, well, generally try not to leave any sort of exclamation marks at the end of sentences, you know, just not seem over emotional. Um, and another important point, although I don't think this is necessarily um, mandatory or obligatory, is to limit your use of phrasal verbs. Um, what this means is that there are, um, well, these things that we call phrasal verbs, so they are um, verbs that are expressed not only um, through, through the verb, but also another word after it. So a really simple ex example is when you, for instance, want to say that you are um, looking at something, so you're checking something out. So this is a, a phrasal verb. 
Um, but it's advised to avoid using phrasal verbs and formal language and instead use um, verbs like examine because they sound more, well, they just generally sound more intelligent and they sound more sophisticated. Um, another example would be instead of um, saying that something worked out or you worked something out, that something was successful because once again, it sounds um, more sophisticated. Yeah, and then moving on to, to structure and paragraphs, maybe maybe some of my colleagues want to want to comment on this one. Well, uh, I can do it, but uh, to begin with, structuring paragraphs is uh, quite difficult to pinpoint, uh, especially when uh, all of the exercises differ in, in the exams. Like you get. Uh, uh, the one exercise for writing the letter, and then you also uh, get to write uh, the actual essay. But uh, obviously, we're focusing on letters, and usually, letters will have uh, this really strict structure that you just have to learn. Uh, basically, uh, the first point the structure of your paragraphs will depend on the type of letter but you're writing. Uh, basically, it all depends on the structure of the exercise. Uh, if you're given uh, a formal letter exercise and you have uh, to write uh, two complaints, two problems, then you have to write them uh, exactly as uh, the exercise states. Uh, usually, uh, the structure consists of uh, the greeting, the uh, main problem, uh, then actually discussing the problem uh, and more so, but we'll discuss that later on. Uh, so yeah, the second point is also important that everything that's written in uh, the exercise, you have to cover everything. If you miss out at least one thing, for, for example, uh, uh, write a complaint about two issues to a manager. If you only write about one issue, you're going to lose points. If you only write about, if you uh, write about three, it might also um, uh, put a minus on your points. Uh, now the third one, obviously, if the points are similar, you can try putting them in one paragraph. However, this is not very recommended because uh, the word limit is very strict in the exams. If you go over the limit far too much, you're going to lose points. If you, uh, again, write two uh, little uh, words, you'll lose points. And moving on to the next slide, uh, this is basically all these slides are just going to be discussing uh, the format of these. So with the greeting, it's the first line and you either write uh, Dear Sir and Madame, Dear Mr. Name and Surname, Dear Mrs. Name and Surname, uh, but usually uh, you have to just look really uh, uh, closely into the exercise. if. Uh, the exercise states, uh, uh, it, if it writes down a name, like like in the last year's exam, Mr. Felix Cited. You write, Dear Sir uh, uh, Felix Cited, or Dear Mr. Felix Cited. So basically, just be very attentive and look at uh, what the exercise says. And uh, in the other part, uh, you just write that about what you're writing. So you, you skip a line, you write dear Mr. or Mrs. name, surname, and then in that line, you just write uh, the main uh, issue uh, uh, that's given in the exercise. So I'm writing to you regarding the main problem in uh, the exercise. For example, I'm writing to you regarding uh, the canceled ticket, uh, the canceled event. I'm writing to you regarding a refund. I'm writing. Uh, I'm writing to you concerning uh, my paycheck. Anything that you can imagine. And now I guess uh, I'll give the floor to my other colleagues, so I don't take up uh, too much time. Yeah, it seems it seems we're having a bit of uh, technical difficulties on Teams, 
as always. Um, so, so I, I guess I'll take this uh, part over. Yeah. So after the greeting, as as my uh, and the reasons for writing, as my colleague already discussed. So we go to the body paragraph. Um, yeah. The reason we didn't put um, too much information um, about the body paragraphs is because. Uh, oh, sorry. Could, could you go back to the last slide? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So. The reason we, why we didn't put uh, a lot of detailed information about the body paragraphs is because um, what you need to include in the body paragraphs, as my colleague already alluded to, is highly dependent on the kind of task that you have. So, for instance, if you are asked to, to write a letter of application, let's say for a job, then, of course, in the body paragraphs, you will have to write about your skills, um, you will have to write about your education, your experience, and so on. If you're writing, um, why you, if you're writing, for instance, a semi-formal letter to apply to a course, let's say in university, then you will need to write about um, uh, what sort of course you want to uh, apply to, um, why you want to apply to that course. Um, or why you think you're the right fit for the course and 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 so on. So keep in mind that um, that the body paragraphs are highly dependent on on what the task asks you to actually write about, but that in the body paragraphs, um, all of the information that the task asks you to provide should be um, found in there. Um, and, and and usually after the, the reasons for writing. So let's say if the task gives you three points to, to write about. So typically you can expect um, to write about three paragraphs um, to cover these three points. Of course, if the task asks you to um, cover more points than three, then maybe the points are related um, in some way. And uh, by answering, you know, like one point, you can flow right into the other point. So it really depends on your own writing style. Um, but generally, the rule is that if you have, uh, let's say, you know, like three points given, then you're supposed to write about three uh, proper body paragraphs. Um, uh, well, explaining the points. Well, not really explaining the points, but but covering what the task asks you to cover. And we will look at um, some of the some of the examples of this. Yeah, it, it, yeah. If we could go to the next slide, thank you. Uh, uh, before a bit before that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So and the, the so here we come to the summary and uh, conclusion. Um, this does follow a certain pattern as well, um, although once again it depends on what kind of letter you're writing. So as I mentioned, if you're writing a letter um, of application, so what so typically what you want to do is you want to use phrases such as um, "I'm enclosing my CV in the letter," um, "I'm leaving my contact information in the letter." And and uh, you use phrases like uh, "I look forward to hearing from you soon," but of course it could be written um, in a separate uh, space below this sort of um, conclusion paragraph. Um, basically, the the summary of the conclusion paragraph is so that you can um, reiterate some of the points that you've already mentioned in the letter, and so that you can use these phrases like I am leaving my contact information so that um, so that you may contact me for a further inquiry inquiry or, or something like that um, in closing CV and, and so on but it depends on the task yeah and and you can then write look forward to hearing from you soon and then we reach uh, the sign off which I will go um, which I will give for my for my colleague to cover. Okay, so. <laughs>
basically uh, you skip a line after uh, the last paragraph, the little two lines, or more if you write some after uh, you write down, I look forward to hearing from you soon, uh, and any other uh, ways of writing. And then you just write sincerely, yours truly, yours sincerely, anything that you can think of as a sign off, write a comma, and then unless uh, the exercise actually states it, you never write your name. Uh, Usually in the exam exercises, the names uh, are given, like Alex Brown, that's the most common one. But if the exercise doesn't state uh, anything about the name, you just leave it blank. Just write yours truly, comma, and leave it blank. You, if you write your name, your actual real name and surname in the exam, it's going to be annulled. You're going to fail the exam. Uh, it's basically a protocol of anonymity, and you just do not write your name at all, unless uh, the exercise states that you have to write a certain name, but it will never be your real name. Now, uh, moving on to the next slide, I think. Uh, yeah, now we're just going to delve into the types of letters. Basically, with this one, the letter of complaint is that usually the exercise would give you something uh, like that you weren't satisfied with uh, uh, your experience there, you were unsatisfied with uh, the employees, you were unsatisfied with the quality of uh, uh, the, your entire trip or whatever that you purchased. Uh, in your letter, uh, when uh, whatever uh, the exercise states, usually it's going to be explaining the problem, how you feel about the problem, and what uh, 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 issue that you would like to solve, what steps would you like the manager to take? So following the previous structure, here you would write uh, dear Mr. slash Mrs. Manager or dear Miss slash Madame, uh, either one of those uh, introductions. Then you write, uh, I am writing to you regarding uh, my recent sports center visit uh, and my uh, dissatisfaction with the changing rooms. And then you just go into the body paragraph and explain everything in detail. You write about the problem. You, you just write out every single one of the points in the body paragraph that uh, are given here. So first you explain the problem. Uh, my issue with uh, the changing rooms in the sports center were, for example, uh, it was very untidy, it was very dirty. Uh, or just uh, it was very unhygienic. And the second one could be that whatever you can think of, maybe the, the rooms were too small. I did not like uh, the design of the rooms, whatever. And then uh, either you write it in the same paragraph or you go to a new paragraph and then you write how you feel about this problem. Uh, so uh, I was grossly shocked by uh, the quality uh, of the rooms. Uh, I did not uh, feel comfortable in them. Uh, anything as well that you can think of. And then again, in either the same paragraph or a new one, you write down the steps the manager, uh, you want the manager to take, uh, uh, what issues you want to solve. And then once you're done, for example, writing, uh, I would like uh, a refund for my visit or uh, I would like a discount for, uh, for my next visit. And then in that same uh, paragraph, you write, uh, I look forward to hearing from you soon. Uh, then you uh, obviously uh, skip a line. And then you write yours truly, sincerely, comma. And since this uh, exercise doesn't have any given name, you do not write anything, especially if it's an exam uh, exercise. Basically, you'll fail the exam if you write your real name. And that's all about this one. Yeah, and, and here we sort of have um, uh, an example uh, of the same task and, and someone writing about it. Um, now, of course, this isn't uh, necessarily a perfect example, but it's something to help you imagine um, how this task should be fulfilled. So as you can see, and as my colleague mentioned, so in 
the first paragraph we have uh, the reason for for writing and it, in this case the person chooses not to put anything else into um, this paragraph just this um, sort of um, uh, just just one sentence um, typically at least in the body paragraphs um, when you're writing you don't want to leave the paragraph as one or two sentences usually you want to have at least something like three or four sentences um, but but that's uh, for for the body paragraphs and see and we see that this criteria is uh, yeah more or less fulfilled in the paragraph so they explain the problems that they have with the gym um, that there appears to be no maintenance work um, done in the changing room facilities um, and then they uh, sort of draw some sort of results due to the lack of this maintenance so the paint is peeling off the walls um, then in the in the in the other body paragraph the author uses um, a bit more fiery language now keeping in mind that this is a semi-formal letter you um, probably would not want to write something like that I feel that we are being treated like farm animals you would want to stay a bit uh, a bit more cold than that and uh, try to replace it with some sort of um, other phrase e expressing your dissatisfaction yeah, not to say that you can't express dissatisfaction, but you want to pay attention to what sort of um, phrases you utilize. And we can see in the last paragraph here, well, like in the, in the conclusion paragraph, I guess you could say, so the author suggests um, some way to rectify the situation. And because this is a letter of complaint, so you can um seek some uh, some uh, some kind of um uh, some kind of financial reimbursement um for for the for the supposed like harm that you've encountered you could of course leave some sort of recommendations for the problem to be um addressed you could ask for um refunds you could ask for to be able to return an item and if it's uh, if you have to write about an, uh, an item that um, you received of, of, of poor quality. So basically, this is uh, a pretty bas basic version of um, the letter of complaint. Nothing too special here. Um, so I think we can move on if, if no one has any questions about this kind of letter. Okay, no questions, I suppose. Yeah, so I guess I can I can take this task, and my colleague can then um, discuss the 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 example um, there. Although I have to mention that, unfortunately, well, because this was taken from uh, the English exam uh, of twenty eighteen, I wasn't actually able to find any. Uh, any sort of um, fulfilled task. So I just had to use um, another one I found off the internet that is also a letter of, of, of application, but I'm sure my colleague can still uh, go through that. Yeah, so anyway, this is what the letter of application that I was talking about earlier looks like. And uh, here we see that the task is to write a letter of application to Miss Griffin. So we have the name, so you know what to put um, in the greeting in, in the greeting line. So, dear Miss Griffin, um, and here we have to write a letter applying for um, the well for just for just being a, a volunteer. And and here we have um, and here we have some some points that need to be covered. So, as I mentioned before. Well, I was explaining these sorts of prototypical letters of application. So you need to choose a um, task that you would like to do. You have to explain why you would be good at this specific task. Um, and the task also says that you should give two reasons. So of course, if you're writing, 
the ev evaluators should be able to um, see that you have given at least two reasons for why you are you know the right person for this particular task and then of course you have to write in another paragraph what you hope to learn from volunteering so because it, the task doesn't specify it can be one it can be one thing you want to learn from volunteering two three however you however many you want to um, write about um, but within the, the the realm of reason you don't want to you don't want to um, dedicate like half of the letter writing about what you want to learn from volunteering um, one interesting thing that I, I, I consider from uh, consider to be from this task is that um, the reason that I included this um, the, the the street music day image is because it actually um, has the tasks that you need to um, pick. So if you look over to the part where it says volunteers need uh, volunteers needed, have fun and help by, and here you have the tasks that you have to choose from. Now I don't necessarily know whether you are whether the evaluators would remove points if you didn't choose one of the tasks that um, was one of the tasks that that were mentioned here. But generally, if the the task itself gives you a list of um, a list a list of, uh, of of jobs that you need to you know choose from, then you should choose from that list just to play it safe. So. Once again, not sure whether points were reducted if you didn't pick one of these tasks, but just to play it safe, you should always try to read all of the information that is given here and uh, just just mull it over by yourselves. And, and only then should you begin thinking about writing and then writing. So yeah, so... This is once again pretty um, typical and standard uh, letter of application task. Um, nothing too special here. So I'll just um, give it over to to my colleagues so that he can analyze the the other letter of application that we have here. Okay. So uh, before that, I'll uh, I found the uh, evaluation paper for the previous exercise. And basically, uh, as much as I see, uh, there isn't much uh, emphasis on uh, the, uh, the picture. Uh, basically, uh, it's, it's more so based on the situation, uh, but uh, you will not get uh, zero points just because you don't mention any of these, uh, uh, the five points in the picture. But now talking about this, uh, uh, letter. It follows uh, the structure quite nicely. Uh, the first one, dear sir, and madam. Uh, uh, this is if uh, the addressee isn't known. Uh, if there are no names given, you write this because it's uh, the most neutral way of writing this. Then also, uh, you skip one line and then write uh, the second one, and you write your intentions for writing. So I would like to apply for a position at your Devon summer camp this year. Then uh, the body paragraphs start. Hold on. Uh, then the body paragraphs start, and you just write everything that was listed in the exercise. But uh, since we don't know the exercise, here uh, the person uh, writes that uh, writes about their uh, attributes, that they're outgoing, they have energy, they have a great sense of fun and adventure. Also, they write about their dedication, responsibility. Uh, so basically, they write down at least four to five traits just in the first body crowd paragraph. And basically, the reader gets a lot of information. And this is a really good example of uh, how you compress information into one paragraph. And then the second one, uh, the person goes from talking about their personal uh, abilities and traits to their relevant skills. Usually, if you're writing about your skills, 
uh, in a letter, you do not just write about random skills. You write things that are relevant to this. This is also relevant to writing CVs, writing uh, anything, basically. So now the writer goes very uh, into detail about uh, uh, the so their certificates for kayaking and climbing, uh, also about their previous experience as a sailor, uh, about their pre previous experience as a scout leader, uh, and about having respect within their inner circle. So just always look for what's written in the, the exercise. Uh, if you don't know what words to write, just try to find anything synonymous Try to find anything that you just uh, can fill up uh, the, par the paragraphs. And so you actually ha have enough words for the text. So you just have a text in, in general. Uh, the third body paragraph is writing, uh, uh, writing about the reasonings for wanting to apply to this position. Uh, for here, it's basically uh, being an activity leader at a summer camp, uh, but also the writer points out that they wouldn't mind any position uh, that fits their skills and experiences. Um, and also, they talk about organization. So uh, analyzing this and remembering this isn't very useful, but just remembering that uh, the structures exist and there's always going to be uh, three body paragraphs is important. Uh, now, uh, after the body paragraph is done, uh, you write about uh, usually what uh, the course of actions uh, you want to happen. So you either write that uh, uh, I want uh, uh, one problem to be fixed, but in this situation you write about uh, I look forward to hearing uh, if I was accepted, uh, I look forward to hearing uh, if I have been applied for this position, but here they wrote I thank you for your consideration and look forward to hearing from you. So it's very neutral. It doesn't demand uh, the manager, the employer, to actually uh, put them into this position. And then again, it follows the structure of yours faithfully. You can write anything here sincerely, yours sincerely, cordially, anything. And then obviously goes the name and also reminder if uh, the exercise doesn't mention anything about the name, you do not write it. Now, uh, moving on to uh, the next slide. Uh, thanking letter. Basically, uh, this exercise gives you information that you attended a public lecture on effective time management. Now you write a semi-formal email to thank the speaker, uh, a business person called Miss Williams, and always follow the points. So in this one, you write that uh, you mentioned where and when you heard her lecture. You explain why you found it useful. And uh, look at how many reasons you have to give. Usually, uh, it's two reasons. And then invite her to your school to do another talk on a different topic. So basically, you would just write, uh, Dear Mrs. Williams, uh, comma, you, you skip a line and uh, you write about the lecture. So say where and when you heard a lecture. Uh, I listened to your lecture uh, last week at Venice University, for example. Or to apply it to the current situation, I listened to uh, your lecture on effective time management uh, on a Teams meeting uh, last week. Uh, then you write down uh, what uh, why you found this uh, to be useful. Uh, you, uh, 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 you should skip a line after this when you just, where you, when, when you heard your lecture, you write uh, about how, why you found it useful. So for this, uh, this is effective time management. So you write that. Uh, I found uh, your lecture useful because uh, I learned to, I learned to develop my time management skills, uh, of course, but that's very vague and usually uh, the examinators want you to write uh, synonyms rather than uh, the actual uh, words given in the exercise. So 
you have to reword everything that's given to you. So basically, you would say that uh, I found it useful because uh, I learned uh, really effective skills on um, uh, managing uh, on managing my time. That could be a good reiteration. And the second reason could be anything. You just I found it useful because uh, I can apply it to my uh, future work skills. Then you uh, also argue, you give arguments as to uh, why you chose those, why you think those uh, two reasons. Uh, you just basically uh, go into into depth about those reasons. You write about those reasons. Then again, you skip a line after you're done with that. And you invite your serious school to join uh, another talk on a different topic. So basically, you could write, uh, I would like to uh, hear you give a lecture at our school on the topic of uh, business management. It's very similar to effective time management. So just basically try to uh, stay relevant, uh, 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 stay relevant to the topic. So that uh, in this exercise, it's written a business person called Miss Williams. So it would be really logical to uh, put her into a box of uh, business. And I think we can move on uh, to the next slide. Yeah, well, this is one of those examples. I also forgot to mention that yours truly, yours sincerely. And then as the exercise mentions, uh, uh, in this one, I did not see uh, any uh, sort of name given, so you would leave it blank, no names, uh, or your exam gets disqualified. So here, dear sir, I'm writing to uh, thank you and your staff for making our celebration meal so special last Friday evening. So uh, the where is given last Friday eve, uh, the when is given last Friday evening, uh, the where uh, was basically the celebration meal, but uh, maybe uh, the uh, exercise wasn't uh, specifying uh, about that. Then you move to the body paragraph where, where the writer explains that I made a booking for 10 people at a very short notice on Friday, and you managed to find us a table. Basically, the writer is thanking uh, the reader uh, on why they did this. Uh, it's just uh, being very grateful to the person reading this. Uh, the first one, the first sentence is the statement basically, and then uh, they really go into depth about that statement. Uh, the second paragraph is the same thing. They sent up us for celebrating our university graduation. The ceremony had taken place, and my friends and I were so late to finally to have finally receive our degree certificates. This is basically why uh, the celebration was uh, so special. Uh, nobody wanted to go home, so I suggested that we find somewhere to have dinner together. And the third body paragraph, as soon as we walked into the restaurant, we knew uh, that we were in good hands. This is basically uh, thanking the reader uh, on their friendliness, uh, how they uh, invited them uh, into the into their space, into their restaurant, uh, how they were cordial with each other, and just uh, going into depth on why uh, they were thankful. Now, the last, uh, the last line, all 10 of us would like to thank you for giving such a memorable, memorable evening. Uh, basically, just giving the last thanks to the reader, and obviously, that you're faithfully, you're truly, you're sincerely, and the name. And that is it about this. Yeah, my my team is actually froze for a bit, so I was gone. But I can take the uh, our our last example of one of these um, prototypical types of letters. So it is the yeah. If if we could just move to to the next slide. Yeah, it's the letter of apology. Um, now, oh, yes, thank you. Okay. Yeah. So 
while we haven't seen this type of letter given in an English exam uh, just yet, um, it's always possible it could be um, given because sometimes the, the, the exam makers, they think of ways to shake up the, the well, 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 just the, well, just the task that the, spe that the students expect to get. So maybe we'll see a letter of apology this year. I'm not quite certain. Um, but anyway, so the letter, letters of apology, um, typically they go like the, the task that we have here. So that you have to write an apology for some, uh, to, to apologize to someone. So in this case, it's your neighbor because you were being um, quite noisy in your flat. And then we have um, certain, um, certain points that you have to cover in the letter. So the first one being you have to explain the reason um, for all of that noise. Secondly, you have to offer your neighbor an apology. Um, and thirdly, you have to tell them what sort of action you will take in order to rectify the situation. So um, luckily, I was actually able to find um, an example of, of this particular task and um, of the written letter. So we can just turn to that. Yeah, whenever it, Whenever it comes to any of these um, sort of prototypical letters, you want to have uh, some sort of more formal phrases in mind uh, that you can use when you're um, writing the letter. So you want to remember um, uh, phrases. It, it, since we're talking about the apology letter, you want to remember phrases like, I am uh, I sincerely apologize for X, Y, and, and Z. And, and and so on. So here we have um, quite a typical structure because your neighbor's name was given, it's Mrs. Dixon. So you have to write, dear Mrs. Dixon, in the beginning, in the greeting section. Then we move on to um, the reason for writing. So it's quite simple. I'm writing to apologize for all the noise coming from my flat over the past few days. Um, uh, yeah, so I think that this phrasing is actually quite fine um, when it comes to, you know, reasons for writing. Um, but then we go down to the body bag paragraphs and, uh, and here we have the person explaining in the first paragraph. So why exactly was there so much noise coming from their apartment? So they state that um, the place is being rewired because it was experiencing technical uh, faults. So it seems that it's uh, quite a justifiable reason to have so much noise coming from your flat. So they spend uh, three sentences explaining this and it's actually uh, quite, quite enough. You don't want to go uh, too much into detail, um, but three sentences is you know just basically the bare minimum for body paragraph. Um, but you can also write four, sometimes even five sentences, um, if you feel like it. Um, then we move to um, apologize it for to the section that uh, where you're supposed to apologize for all of the disturbance. Um, now I don't know, <laughs> I don't I don't necessarily know why the person here decided to. Um, include the phrase banging going on during the day. Um, still keeping in mind that this is a semi-formal letter, you typically don't want to use like uh, phrases like this. You might want to use a, a phrase like um, the the repair was, uh, was quite necessary for my flat. So, um, but I would still like to apologize for any inconvenience that it may have caused you. Um, and the person does that, but they use the phrase, I sincerely ap apologize for this and I regret that you've been disturbed. Um, quite a nice and formal way to say that you're sorry. And uh, then the person goes on to, goes on to explain that 
they're hoping the work would actually already be be done, but they didn't necessarily calculate that it would cause um, such a disturbance. Then we move on to the the sort of um, the the paragraph where the person suggests a way that they could uh, possibly rectify the situation um, because it seems that the person chose to um, chose to uh, chose to well entertain the situation that the repairs aren't actually done yet. So they're framing it in this way that they will hire another person to get the work done. Of course, if you chose to write it uh, in a way that the noise happened in the past, then you could say that um, that uh, you will make sure, for instance, to tell her in advance uh, when repairs are going to be done, so that you know, for instance, especially I guess during during COVID times right now, so that they um, may schedule any sort of work or meetings uh, when the repairs aren't actually um, happening. And of course, the person also suggests that they would ask the electricians to um, be quieter and to finish sooner. Um, now, some of these last lines, like, please accept my apologies again. This doesn't necessarily have to be written as a separate line. I believe it could be integrated into the sort of um, concluding paragraph mentioning um, uh, mentioning what sort of actions you will take to make the situation better. Um, so it doesn't necessarily have to be um, a separate line, but it's usually a good thing to include another line apologizing just so you sort of drive the point home that you are very sincerely uh, sorry for all of the um, inconveniences that you might have caused. And uh, here in, in, in this case, um, it wasn't given in the task to sign in a particular way. So you don't want to include the line Jackie Spear. I assume that this is the offer. This is the name of the offer here. So in the exam, once again, do not do this. Um, you're not supposed to sign your name. You only have to do it in the case that the name is is given to you in the task, and it's a name that's you know like not yours, not your personal name. I think that's actually um, it in terms of all of the material that we have prepared. And I suppose now that we can move into Q&A if you have any sorts of questions that you would like to ask us about formal and semi-formal letter writing. Yeah, I Ate pavyzdžiui dabar aš klausaus, bet um, pavyzdžiui tas apology, ten uh, question, tas kur, nu, ta prasme, kažkokia tai uh, kažką paprašyti pakeisti ar ten, nu, nežinau net, tai yra visą laiką kažkokia struktūra, kaip, kaip pasakėt, ar tiesiog kaip pačiam kažkokius argumentus susidėti, va taip ir ten čia kaž, nu, ta prasme, ir taip, ar reikėtų kažką struktūrą būtinai išmokti? Tam vidurioj pačiam dėstymo pastraipos tos, kur yra trys, tam pingios, nežinau. Mm -hmm. Jo, jeigu teisingai supratau, kaip ir uh, pačiam kaip situacijos pagerinimui ar pateisimui, tai nėra kažkokios na, ypatingos kaip struktūros. Aš turiu omeny, kad galima įsiminti kokias, nu, tiesiog formalesnius būdus, pavyzdžiui, pasakyti, atsiprašau, arba kad uh, aš padarysiu viską, kad šitą situaciją kaip at, atitaisyčiau. Aš, tu, aš turėjau manį, kad geriau yra įsiminti kaip šiose vietose kažkokį kaip, na, formalesnį būdą pasakyti būtent tą atsprašau arba aš padarysiu geriau kitą kartą. Nes kaip nenoriu būti toje situacijoje, kad negali kaip išreikšti adekvačiai ir, ir formaliai būtent tos minties. Uh, Bet kalbant apie, apie kaip struktūrą, tai vienintelį padarimą, kurį galiu duoti dėl letters of apology, tai jo, 
kai, kai kurie žmonės galbūt, galbūt taip kaip klasės daro, daro, nes nori būti labai edgy, bet turėtum, nu, ta prasme, rašyti kaip let's have apology, o ne rašyti taip, kad I didn't do anything wrong, I have nothing to be sorry for. Tai tiesiog turėtų aminė, kad tai turi būti kaip let's have apology ir kad to pasiteisinimo turėtų būti idealiai na, minimaliai. Aš, aš tikiuosi, kad atsakiau klausimą. Atsakė, tai ačiū. Neršo. Aš tu klausimą dėl uh, pastraipų būtent. Uh, Minėjau tą pačio, kad jau gali būtų matujūti penkių liktais, jeigu gerai pamano. Uh, ir aš kiek prisimenu, mus mokytojai sakė, kad galbūt ir pastaiko situacijų, kai kiekvienam punktui, tarkim, kai užduotis yra punktai, reikia atskiros pastaipos, bet jeigu, tarkim, kokius du punktus suplaki vieną, tai nėra labai blogai. Aišku, nebent jie ten neįta man visiškai. Tai norėčiau gal tokio patiksinimo būtent dėl tų pastaipų, jeigu būtų galima. Na, šiaip, kiek aš prisimenu, kiek Man mokytai sakė, kiek aš esu skaitęs iš tų vertimų į sauksijų, tai nėra niekur parašyta, kad ten būtinai reikia išskirti kiekvieną punktį ir atskiras pastraipas ten. Realiai visi punkti gali sudirbti į vieną pastraipą, tai pavyzdžiui, jeigu rašyti ten tokią milžinišką pastraipą. Ir ten yra visi punktai, kurie turi, yra parašyti užatyti, tai viskas yra gerai. Tiesiog svarbu, kad nepamirš struktūras, nedaryti tu aišku rašybos klaidų, gramatinių klaidų, bet jeigu Ir išskiriamai visi tie punktai, tai irgi nesvarbu, nes nėra jokiuose nuosatėse parašyta, kad būtinai ten turi įskirti, ar viską turi būtinai rašyti čia. Čia yra laisvas pasirinkimas, nes tu gali parašyti, kad ir vieną pastraipą, kad ir penkias. Nu, čia yra tiesiog asmeninis pasirinkimas, iš tikrųjų. Jo, a- aš tik dar pridurčiau, kad... Um... Na, kad, kad į pastraipas kaip semifumulacijos žiūrimą yra panašiai kaip, tarkim, pastraipas, jeigu rašai kokį opinion essay ar, ar phone against essay, kad, kad nu, kai kurie tiesiog vertintai žiūri, kad, kad turi būti pastraipos. Ir jeigu kaip ir suplaki vieną tekstą, nors nieko kaip nėra nuosatose, jie gali pradėti vertinti ar, ar, ar griežčiau, ar tiesiog numušti taškus, na, kaip Na, iš principo, nes, nes nėra kaip iki pastraipų. Tai, na, mes tiesiog laikomės tos, tos kaip nerašytos taisyklės, kad gerai yra turėti atskiras pastraipas, būtent tose kaip laiškose. Galima sudėti a, kelis punktus į, į vieną pastraipą, jeigu jie yra, žodžiu, kaip labai gretimi, kaip, kaip vienas kitam, kur tu iš esmės gali atsakydamas į vieną punktą, peršokti iš karto kaip, kaip ir prie, prie kito. Um, bet, jo, kaip Martinas sakė, tai asmeninis pasirinkimas didžiadienį. Dėkui. Na, jeigu nebėra daugiau klausimų, galim ir užbaigti, jeigu ką tikriausiai galim parašyti ar messengerį, mes esam visi toj pačioj grupėj, tai galėjai ir tiek šiai pamokai. Tai va, visim priminimas, kad mes esam, aišku, messengerio grupėj, ta, Facebook'o grupėj, bet ir yra dar du keitį mokytojai, kurie bus ketvirtadienį liktais, nu, čia realiai keitinėsis visi ir Tiesiog tik tiek linkiu gerai išlaikyti egzaminus. Jo, kaip je, jeigu, nori, jeigu turėsite klausimų apie kaip laiškus ar apie esas, man atrodo, kad mes būsime visi tie patys, kurie kalbės ir, ir apie esas. Tai galite tiesiog rašyti mum. Um, tiesiog kaip paskutinis galbūt punktas, kaip, kaip mūsų visam, visam šitai kaip konsulacija, jeigu nėra klausimų, Galbūt kai kuriem iš jūsų iškilo toksai klausimas, kodėl mes vis naudojame žodį kaip semifumal, o pavyzdžiui, nenaudojame fumal, um, ir kalbame pagrindę apie semifumal laiškus, tam yra kaip pakankamai paprastas atsakymas, kad, e, kad, kad skirtumas tarp fumal ir semifumal būtent tų laiškų, kaip ir 
nėra, nėra iš esmės kaip žiauriai didelis, arba bent kai būna visados duodamos egzaminą užduotis, kad yra prašoma rašyti dažniausiai kaip semiai fumul tos laiškos. Ir ką reiškia, būt, ir ką reiškia rašyti fumul ir semiai fumul laišką, tai nėra taip gerai apibrėžta, tai mes dažniausiai tiesiog sakome, kad, kad, kad ruošiamės rašyti kaip semiai fumul laiškos. Tai čia, kad nebūtų kaip per daug confusing, kai galbūt jūs žiūrėsite į šios pamokos titulą ir po to pagalvosite, kodėl mes nekalbėjome apie fumo laiškus. Na, tai yra todėl, kad mes iš esmės kaip traktuojame šios dalykus kaip taip ar tik kartu, kad mes iš esmės kalbame apie tą patį dalyką. Tiesiog naudodami tą terminą, terminą semi fumo. Na, jeigu nėra daugiau klausimų, tada baigsi rekordingą.